Hello friends, Ed Bud here, and today I've got a shoe from another place. Something a little out of the ordinary, against the grain. A review of the Decker's Lab Xscape NBX Low. A little while ago, Decker's Lab sent me a couple of different shoes to review. So just to let you know, these are not shoes I have purchased with my own cash. They have been sent to me by Decker's Lab, but I'm allowed to review them and give you my honest opinions as usual. So this is a strange hybrid, a sneaker, slipper, running shoe. To me though, it feels a little bit more like something I'd wear for a recovery day. It certainly comes from the left field with its very interesting and unique stylings. And some really high quality materials here too, which I've been very impressed with. Some stats and info first on this shoe before I dive deep into the upper midsole and outsole and then talk about value. We've got Nubuck leather here. It really is soft soft as a squirrel's tail. Also on one set of the insoles, we've got this looped wool here. Very similar to what we saw in the previous Decker's Lab shoe that I reviewed a couple of months back. There's a six mil drop here in the Xscape, 25 millimeters in the heel and 19 millimeters in the forefoot. This is a very weighty shoe in my UK size 11 and a half. It weighs in at 480 grams. So it's over a pound of weight here rather than running up and utilizing this for casual use due to the weight. Comfort here though is the priority rather than out and out performance. So let's start with the upper. We've got these H braces here, one on either side. that really do create a great lockdown over the top of the forefoot. They act as like a supporting section really. And when you do the laces up, you cinch them up, there really is a great lockdown. Really feels like the shoe's wrapping around the top of your foot. With my UK size 11 and a half, I found the 3D anatomical looped wool insoles just far too thick here. And in terms of sizing, I had to switch out to the more standard insoles. Just wasn't quite enough room in the front of the shoe for me. And switching to the other insoles made for a much better fitting upper. I mean, they were kind of okay without socks, but certainly wearing with socks, it had to be the thinner insoles. You get two sets in there, so you can pick and choose. As I said, I've been mainly using these for walks and for casual use in dry and wet conditions. The Nubuck leathers held up really well, actually, and the neoprene sort of section here in the toe box does add to the breathability of the shoe. I'd say even with socks, these shoes haven't been too hot in the warmer UK temperatures we have right now in the summer. They've been absolutely fine in terms of breathability on long dog led strolls through the countryside. So it's a good structure and support with this lacing system. And there's this huge massive heel cushion here around the Achilles. It really is quite substantial as you can see. There's a booty construction to the tongue as it wraps around the foot. And you've got a little bit of that looped wool right back in the rear section of the heel. I did feel that the heel cushioning there around the Achilles certainly was a little bit too much for me. I feel they could have perhaps withdrew some of that and it wouldn't have made a massive difference to the comfort of the shoe. One thing I did find with the Xscape was the laces are just ridiculously long. They don't need to be anywhere near as long. They could have chopped off a few inches and it wouldn't have affected the lockdown whatsoever. Just felt like I had a lot of lace flapping around whenever I tied them up. Overall though, some quality materials in the upper and a really comfortable shoe on foot. Midsole now. So as you can see from the midsole here, it's more in line with a Hoka type shoe, which Hoka are in fact owned by Decker's Lab. It's certainly a Hoka feel to the shoe. And when you look at it, actually, it does borrow a little bit, perhaps from the Clifton Edge. You've got that rocker there as well. There's some Hoka DNA in here. There's a really nice wide midsole platform for the foot to fall on. Within this Decker's Lab shoe, you've got the Exponent HD midsole foam. So it's a caged PU foam, which then has a TPU outer to it. I really think the outer section's there to provide a protective layer to the softer foam inside. And it really is very soft underfoot. A real dream for a runner who's just about to hit the 95th day of a 100 day target run streak. 60 odd miles a week for the last few months. And my feet feel really, really grateful to have these available. I suggest indoors with that wool mix insole there. It really is heavenly underfoot. And outside, if you use the other insole, it's a lot more breathable. And as I mentioned, gives a tad more room in the toe box. Very cushioned, very forgiving, and very plush. That's just a few words that I would use for this shoe. 
I suggest vastly more cushions than the Clifton 7 or the Rincon. Makes me wonder whether they can produce a running shoe lower weight with this same midsole foam. It would be fantastic. Certainly interesting to see Decker's Lab with a very new approach here. Not a performance running shoe I would suggest, but a great shoe for recovery. Caressing those poor pads on the bottom of my feet. Around the front of the shoe you've got a slightly firmer, harder rubber here to protect the toes. And then that real wedge at the back of the shoe. It really does stick out. As you can see, that's why I instantly thought of the Hoka Oni Oni Clifton Edge. There is an exceptionally wide midsole platform there. Outsole next. So a very simple layer of high abrasion rubber across the outsole of the Xscape. We've got that familiar hexagonal pattern here. So far, so good. Rubber's holding up really well. No signs of wear whatsoever. I've been using them on some trails, roads, gravel areas, all the typical stuff, and even climbing up some steep hills. No real sign of wear whatsoever on the outsole. Seems pretty grippy in both dry and wet conditions. I haven't experienced any sliding around. Got to talk value now. So I think these retail for about $160. Certainly a high price for a recovery shoe, or perhaps a casual shoe really. But I would suggest the comfort here is unmatched. This is the shoe I go and grab for after a long run, it just feels really, really wonderful walking around in these. They've saved me a few times, I'm sure of it. A forgiving midsole, but with premium materials, and that does mean a premium price. Certainly as well, we have to consider the weight of the shoe. It's a very heavy shoe. 480 grams is no joke. There's probably quite a few very built up trail or hiking shoes that weigh less than this. I think perhaps the midsole could be a little bit too bulky for some people as well. I found it fine, but I guess if you're of a smaller build, it could be a little bulky. I think at the price for a recovery shoe, could perhaps put people off. Economic times are tough right now, but if you're looking for a real premium recovery or casual shoe, you can rock this probably anywhere with the right attire. This could be the shoe for you. Certainly does feel like a premium product and it's really well executed. So a rundown for my pros and cons. So premium materials throughout, certainly in the upper. You get that choice of insoles, so you can switch them up. If you want real comfort with the wool, you can go for that. Or the more traditional type of insole. Superbly cushioned midsole. Wonderful underfoot feel if you're looking for a recovery shoe. Smells good. And really great lockdown with that cage wrap system around the foot. Cons, I would suggest price is a tad high. It's going to put a few people off. They might want to move their funds towards a more athletic shoe rather than a recovery shoe. The overly long laces, just way too long. Could have chopped off a few inches there without a bother. I would suggest that the sizing is a little dependent on the insole type that you use. So do bear that in mind if you're going to grab a pair. And the weight at 480 grams, it's right up there. I'm going to carry on using this one. It's been fantastic. I do appreciate Decker's Lab for sending it over. It really is my go-to recovery shoe right now. You got any questions, opinions, thoughts on the Decker's Lab Xscape MBK Low? Let me see them in the comments. A brief musical interlude. It's been more garage rock recently from Billy Childish and the Buff Medways. This one's back from 2005. It's called the Medway Wheelers. Although on the back it does specifically state it's Wild Billy Childish and the Friends of the Buff Medway Fanciers Association. So I think the Buff Medway is a type of extinct chicken now. It's lo-fi, it's dirty, it's very, very wild and unrehearsed. There's lots of ad-lib stuff on here, which is quite in the same vein as other Billy Childish material. There's always some really cool artwork as well of Billy Childish and the Buff Medways in their old military outfits. I'm a Lie Detector is a particularly good track, along with A Distant Figure of John. I think most of the tracks on here are the Buff Medways attempting to sound like late 60s era Who. It's just wild and crazy rock and roll. Do check it out. Wild Billy Childish and the Buff Medways. This one's called the Medway Wheelers. Thanks for watching through to the very end of the video, guys. I very much appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when new videos are launched. It really does help the channel out a huge amount if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.